Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. Again, it may seem like the man in the chair, but not to most of you. I am in a family right now in your three-dimensional presence. You sit with me and I sit with you. And what this family has in common is that you're searching. <coughs> and the search brings you to a place where you will sit and listen to those things which are advanced attributes of life. Where spiritually you are willing to think beyond that which is your reality. It makes you special. Special in this way that not all of those who would be light workers on the planet would be willing to look beyond themselves in the way you are. And so you have spent the day doing things perhaps which are a bit against the grain of what you've been taught. Learning to listen to spirit is one of them. Difficult some cases impossible, you know who you are. Some of you have said fine, some of you have said not for me. I know who you are. And there is no judgment of any of this. If you have to step out of your comfort zone, dear ones, it is difficult. And if you never step out of your comfort zone, the same number of angels walk out with you as walk out with the healer. But it allows me to give an advanced message. And for those who may be listening, who are not of the same kind of advancement spiritually as those in the room, this may seem strange indeed. The message this evening is not long, but it deals with profundities, and those things which are beyond that which are normal in 3D, and beyond that which even you think about, beyond that which you have been taught, and often flies in the face of all logic to the logical thinker. And who better to present these things than you? Hmm? Who better to listen to these things than you? And should you accumulate the knowledge that is given this day, perhaps you, as the advanced one, the light worker, the old soul would be then able to tell others in a succinct fashion about what you've learned. And so this is the kind of group, dear ones, that would elicit this kind of information. For as I've said before, spirit through cryon is going to give information that suits the moment for the ones who are before me. And so let me begin. Only two subjects we bring, only two, quickly but profoundly and different than you would expect. Let us talk about contracts. In a three-dimensional world, you have developed a spiritual term, and you call it contract. Now, my partner today spoke about these things in the lecture time, but many who hear this now were not here. But I want to take it even further than that. And what he said was this. 
You cannot look at a three-dimensional linear contract in a spiritual world. For it doesn't work. For you are learning to think in a more quantum way, that is to say, a way that is not 3D. A multi-dimensional attribute placed upon you and spirit brings you to a place where you think differently out of the logic you've been trained. All this to say that a contract is real. You come in with a yod, you come in with a purpose, you come in with something to accomplish. And you send a message to your three-dimensional self as you hear these things that says, I only have one. And it's my life's purpose. And nothing could be less linear. <laughs> and it doesn't work that way. Crying, would you please back up and give this to us in a way we can understand? Yes, I will. Let us state it clearly. There is no such thing as a lifelong contract. It cannot be this way. There are two things wrong with it. In a multidimensional state, it is always moving. In a multidimensional state, there is no singularity. Therefore, not only do you not have one contract for life, none of them are for life. In other words, you come in with multiples. Now, how can that be? I'll explain it now. And this is going to explain why some of you are so confused. <laughs> if you are an old soul, let us talk about who you've been. Let us take one of you in the room. who may be an orator, who may be an author. How many things have you excelled at in a thousand lifetimes? Perhaps you're a woodworker, an artist, a musician, a sculptor, among other things. Not to mention the mother you've been sometimes, sir. And all of those things are in the soup of the now. And in you come on the planet, and as you develop as a child, your passions are all over the place. What are you going to do? And can you tell me at that point in time, you're going to pick one and say, well, that's my contract. But you do. Because someone along the line told you, in a question, what are you going to do with your life? <laughs> and implied in that is, what one single thing are you going to do that's going to establish you? And that's the way you think, don't you? When you meet somebody for the first time, and you're getting acquainted, they ask you this, they say, and what do you do? Isn't that interesting? How many? Human beings have you ever met for the first time and they would ask, and what have you done? <laughs> How many things are you into? Uh -uh. There's an assumption that you're singular. You do one thing and that's what your interest is. Oh, how 3D of you. And here's what I'm telling you, multiple contracts lay upon you constantly and they're only good for the time you want to do them. What if you should have an epiphany in your life and raise your vibration? There are those in the room who have had that. In fact, you can probably even tell me when it was. I know who's here. An epiphany in your life which had have caused you to think differently, to raise your vibration, and now you are someone else. You can even look back at who you used to be and go, I'm not that person anymore. Do you think for a moment that all of the things that laid upon you when you were in 20 years old, for instance, are now applicable still simply because there's only one thing to do? And the answer is, of course not. Well, then why are you still thinking you've got one contract? 
Is it possible you change them? And you do. Every single day, you have the opportunity of choosing any one of dozens of purposes you might have for yourself. And your frustration is because you lay there in a three-dimensional place confused because you don't know which one is right what if they're all right and if you start to understand that they could be I would say you are starting to step into that multi-dimensional place where God resides and the divinity in you is starting to show itself as you have an understanding what shall I be this year <laughs> shall I write the book that's always been there even though I don't think I'm an author shall I stand in front of people and teach even though I'm not an orator well yes you are and yes you are your passion can change from time to time depending upon the energy of the crystalline grid where you're living did you hear that <laughs> and who you think you are don't be surprised if as your self-worth increases and you work on yourself your passion will change for what you think you want to do and what is it that's going on there dear one you have just elevated yourself brought forward things in your Akash married yourself to different concepts that are multi-dimensional and then there are those around you who go look at that person who can't make up their mind what they want to do <laughs> and spirit looks at you and say blessed is the human who knows they can do many things there is no such thing as a contract there's only the various passions you come in with And you're going to notice something about Moni. Most of them help other people. It's the compassion factor. What is it that you can do which is compassionate? Can you write a song and give it to another person? And what will be their reaction if you do? Their heart might melt. When Beethoven wrote, Ode to Joy, do you think that he foresaw millions of hearts that melt? I doubt it. But that was his contract of the day. Is there poetry in you? Is there compassionate thought? Can you create a sculpture? And you might say, no, that's not for me. I don't do any of those things. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good with my hands. Yes, but you might be good with your heart. When somebody comes to you at work and wants to share something with you, are there words you can give them that would melt their heart? And that might be your contract for the day. Blessed is the human being who understands that the compassion they have in them is the true contract of God. And what they do with that in any direction, pulling upon their Akash or not, is what they're supposed to do. And that's number one. Don't decide you failed because you can't find one thing you're good at. Because as an old soul, you might be good at 50 things, really good at them, really good at them. And you might start changing what you do every day. <laughs> and the humans around you will think you're wishy-washy because you can't get a grasp on three dimensions. And you can just smile and know they're right. Because you have decided to take on the attributes of a compassionate God. 
I don't understand. I don't understand. You might say these kinds of things cry on because they're a little a little tough to con conceive of. You have trouble with that one. Wait till you hear this one. <laughs> you are advanced enough, dear ones, to listen to this. So I can plant the seeds of truth that are so bizarre to you that you may not believe it, understand how it could possibly be, work with it, because it's not in your reality, but eventually you'll know. And here it is. Let us start with the simplicity of God. That's a dichotomous statement. <laughs> Do you have any trouble praying to God when you know somebody else is also? In your world, if you were going to talk to someone, including a spiritual leader, you'd take turns, wouldn't you? If somebody's talking to them, you wait in line, don't you? Do you do that with God? No. Why? And the answer is because you know God can hear multiple messages at the same time. Do you have any trouble with being in one part of the world or another part of the world or traveling from one to another and speaking to spirit? No. What do you know about spirit? Spirit will be in all places at once. Really? What does that tell you about spirit? God is omnipresent. God is always with you. Spirit knows every heart, every mind. This is your mantra. I'm not giving you information you don't know. But have you ever analyzed what it might mean? It might mean that God is quantum. <laughs> Outside of your reality and a quantum state, God can be everywhere at the same time, entangled with you forever. No time, no space, no distance, no singularity. Everywhere, all the time. Now, follow the logic. What are you learning here on the planet that God is in you? I gave you the information about the splendor in your DNA that the higher self is represented angelic layers are there that chemically you're alive with God it's inside your corporeal attributes God is in you not just spiritually but chemically you are imbued with the divine attributes of a creator and there you sit thinking you're singular and you're not. Therefore, as my partner brought up today, many of you don't understand. You, yourself, your name goes here, are multiple. Beyond your wildest dreams. And what I'm going to tell you next, you will not understand because you have a clock and it's a singular one and this is going to be tough I'm going to talk about the agreement not the contract the agreement to a system of love and some of you are going to relate to this it's beautiful it's beyond beautiful the system of love. I've spoken about this one other time. A system of love. And it has to do with family. This is not about chemistry. 
This is about the attributes of the love of a compassionate God who is inside you, who honors those who are in sorrow because they don't know the truth. Now go slow, my partner, for you are receiving a great deal of information all at once and I can tell you're struggling to know where to begin. If you have a circle presented and the circle has a message that is complete and total as a circle, if you take it apart and begin anywhere in the circle, that means you leave out the rest. And that is the struggle my partner has right now because I am trying to give him a place to start. You have an agreement that in death only part of you leaves, the corporeal part. Part of you remains on the planet and it doesn't go to the crystalline grid. It goes to your Akashic relatives. That's a good start, my partner. So what does it mean? cry on. There are those in the room who have children. On your passing, very an element of your soul which is already split among more places than you want to know about, <laughs> including part of which is God, part of which is on the planet, part of which is on the crystalline and part of which is your only guide set, you're in many places at once already and you pass away from the earth, you think all of you leaves. Oh no. The corporeal life goes away. And what stays and where it goes that we haven't really talked much about is this, you stay with your kids. You might even say, let's put it in 3D. You become one of their guides. Is that clear enough? No, that's not right. <laughs> but that's the way you feel. That's the way you see it. That means you're going to stay with them all of their lives. Now let's back it up. Let's back the circle up. Go back in time with me for a moment. Who have you lost that you loved? Who was family? Parents? Of course, some of you. And against the very fabric of the way it should be, children, some of you. It shouldn't be that way, you know it. You should outlive them. They should outlive you. Ha, huh. what's right? In the circle, everything is right. So let's back up with me. Who have you loved and lost? Well, let's talk about where they are. They're in the room. <laughs> and they're next to you. They're part of you. They absorbed into your Akashic DNA. And if you let them, they'll talk to you in ways that only you will know. Not with words, with intuitive thought, in dreams. Some of you can even smell them. And they'll be with you all your life. Now I want you to follow something that is ultra complex. What about their parents with them? And did that pass to you? Yes. That means what you carry around are your ancestors. And the ones that are closest to you are the ones you've loved and lost in this lifetime. The grandparents, the great grandparents you never knew, they're there. They're there in a way I cannot even begin to tell you for it won't make sense to you, dear ones, except that they are there in honor. Why don't we take a moment to feel it? As the ancestors of you say, good job. We knew you'd be here. We knew you'd make it to the shift. Good job. And everything we did culminates in you. And we will be with you. 
and advise you if you let us all your life. And it doesn't matter whether it's parents or children, they are part of you. And that is an advanced message that many of you will go away from here and say, well, I don't feel them or I don't believe it or it can't be so. And that's because you just limited your own reality. And then there'll be those of you who go, oh my God, I knew it. <laughs> and it explains it all. And then you'll let yourself open up. And they'll be there. And that, dear ones, is real quantum thinking. Allowing yourself on your deathbed to close your eyes with a smile and say, and I'm not gone. <laughs> and you'll be right. And you'll be right. Oh, dear ones, this is a system of love, an Akashic system, a chemical system, an inheritance system. We've only scratched the surface of the way it works. You know who knew this? Who drew it in the sand? The ancients. What's the first thing the ancients did? They honored their ancestors. They even had places for them to live. Dead ones. <laughs> and you come along and say, what a pagan thing is this? Look, they've got a, a house over there for their dead ancestors to live in. They've got an altar for them and they do ceremony around them. Now, who do you think is the pagan here? <laughs> They knew how it worked. They sensed how it worked. They had an intuition they did not block with modern technology or a modern reality that says this or that cannot be so. And they lived longer because of it. They were in touch with it. And so we'll say it again. It's time for the old ways to return. You want some wisdom? Study them. What do you think when somebody casts bones? Do you say, oh, oh how quaint, oh how pagan? You know what's going on there? In your culture you have movies about it. You get the witch doctor casting the bones. Huh? Oh how occult of them. You know what they're doing? They're looking at how the bones fall and counting surfaces, converting it into numerology and giving potentials. That's what they're doing. Numerology, the energy of numbers. Ask Pythagoras about that. He was into it. Master mathematician who knew about the energy of numbers. They weren't simply objects on a page that were sequential they were energy there are so many things hidden in what the ancestors did that you should take another look before you decide what was right and what was wrong and so in these things we bring you this day only two we bring you truths that are beyond the scope of almost every human on the planet of belief. Even some of you will go away scratching your head saying, I'm not really sure I understood it. And that is as it should be. The human being needs time. Seeds need to be planted. You need to exercise this over and over in order to get into a place where you can have a dual reality. The one you go to work in and the one you worship in will slowly meld together and you won't be able to tell the difference. And then God is with you every minute of every hour. And that is the message for this day. And I hope it has touched you in a way that you will go out so different. How many of you are going to claim this? How many of you have the courage to sit in the chair and say, thank you, Spirit. I knew this was so. For this, 
I now understand they're not gone. And that ought to mean something. It does to my partner. For it's the first time he's really got it. It includes even friends. They don't have to be biological. Because sometimes friends are Akashic groups, karmic attributes attached to you. Feels like a sister or a brother, but isn't biological, but they're family. And they're with you too. Did you know that? This is bigger than you think. Go from this place, claim this, and be better because of it. Join your ancestors. In the wisdom that they had that is not acknowledged this day as anything but paganism and trite and start to understand perhaps they had the truth and you're just now learning it and so it is